I'm Susan McGinnis with Clean Skies News. He won't share any official expectations about the timing of his climate bill, but John Kerry says he's now excited about the progress being made. Today, the senator outlines some of the elements of his long-awaited legislation during a policy event here in Washington. Clean Skies' Tyler Suters was there for Kerry's discussion, and he actually had a chance to talk with the senator afterwards. Very briefly, Susan, but it still does count, and it was insightful. Now, it's clear that whatever is next in terms of energy policy and climate policy is what comes next from Senators Kerry, Graham and Lieberman and whatever they include in their climate bill. That is the final version. Today, John Kerry gave a few clues about that, saying the bill will be comprehensive. That's his term. And he says he would be surprised if the final version doesn't include a price collar on carbon emission allowances. And apparently this bill will be unveiled sometime soon. Harry Reid called me just the other day and affirmed that he wants a bill and he wants a bill soon and we're going to try and meet that standard. Um, we are working very, very diligently with a lot of different uh, parties on the Hill. We're talking to all of the groups that you might imagine, you know, people who represent one interest, whether it's heavy industry or people who represent another interest, coal or natural gas, uh, oil, you name it. Uh, they're at the table and we're thinking this through as carefully as we can as to how uh, one can thread the legislative needle. Now, Kerry's legislative update at today's event, there's a title, What's Next for Climate Policy? His discussion came in two parts. First of all, the speech, then a more informal sit-down talk with a moderator. Now, he reaffirmed that he wants GHG legislation, not regulation. Also, Kerry says that he, Graham and Lieberman and their staff members met with Interior Secretary Ken Salazar and his team within the last several days about the bill itself. And also, Kerry dismissed the idea of a carbon tax to lower CO2 emissions, saying, quote, you show me one Republican who's going to vote for that. He was very adamant about that point. But his clearest message today may have been his take on potentially separating his climate bill from the Acela Clean Energy Bill when they arrive on the Senate floor. Well, it's a deal breaker for Lindsey Graham, who called it a half-assed approach. So uh, I'll just quote Lindsey Graham. <laughs> uh, it, it, it doesn't get the job done, folks. It, it just doesn't get the job done. Uh, if you want to move your economy rapidly towards this transformation, you need to send a price signal. An energy-only bill sends no price signal. It simply continues business as usual. And the businesses will have no certainty as to what the future is going to bring. After his speech, I asked Senator Kerry very directly about the climate bill's nuclear title. You remember we've been reporting on elements of that for about three weeks now. And when I asked him if the nuclear section were in fact complete, Kerry said, no, it's not complete yet, but Susan, he said, we are very close and we are very comfortable with it. Those are his words exactly. So what else stood out there? Now, you said that he said legislation and not regulation. Was mm -hmm. that the only mention about EPA, nothing specific about Lisa Jackson's letter to the Democrats? Right. From John Kerry, yes, that's the only thing he has said, and that's something we've heard from the Obama administration and Democratic supporters of a climate bill across the board. We want to legislate. We don't want to regulate. But regulation is there. And John Kerry affirmed time and again the need for a price signal on carbon. He says that is the key. You need the incentives to change technologies, to invest in R&D, and that's what will drive climate legislation and clean energy policy here in so the U.S. So he says price collar on allowances, uh, no specific mention of cap and trade. Those, those uh, words we're hearing less and less often now. Right. I think that's fair to say. Uh, he does not want a carbon tax. I mean, you heard his, his talk right there saying it doesn't send enough of a price signal and the fact that Republicans, he doesn't think, will vote for anything with taxes. In it. Also, the issue is raised today about the CLEAR Act today. That is what Maria Cantwell has uh, co-sponsored along with Susan Collins, but has a bipartisan support. It's basically a cap and dividend. You cap carbon emissions, you take money in from polluters, and you redistribute that money to taxpayers, something that some Republicans have been supporting. John Kerry didn't mention the CLEAR Act as it's known directly, but as you sa heard just a moment ago regarding the carbon tax, he said no Republican will vote for a tax. Mm -hmm. So they're really off the table. It's a matter of what compromise comes up next. Although Maria Cantwell did say to me just a few weeks ago that Harry Reid told her everything is on the table in terms of a means to potentially cap carbon emissions. 
So, Tyler, everybody, uh, th this was a policy event. Everybody there talking about the climate bill. What else stood out to you today? Well, a number of speakers, Susan, were outside the legislative uh, venue or the administration. That is people who have stakes in this. One of them is Fred Krupp, the president of the Environmental Defense Fund. He addressed the idea of a cap-and-trade alternative, that is something like the CLEAR Act. He said, quoting now, at this time, we as stakeholders are looking for a hybrid approach. He said that he has been in conversations with the stakeholders and there is a lot of momentum to find a way. Another speaker today, Thomas Kuhn from Edison Electric. This is a major player in this discussion. He said a cap and dividend, like the CLEAR Act, is not a good idea for electricity providers. He said the concern here is higher consumer bills and the negative reaction that may cause among voters. Finally, lead U.S. climate negotiator Todd Stern addressed climate legislation, saying even if it were in place for Copenhagen, in his opinion, it would not have bridged the difference between what was achieved in Copenhagen, that is the accord, and what many parties wanted. That is a binding international treaty. He did add, Susan, that legislation were in, if it were enacted in the next several months, would put the U.S. in a better negotiating position for the next round of world talks in Mexico. So it would not have made a difference uh, for the Copenhagen Accord, but may make a difference in Mexico. Yeah, make no mistakes, uh, Susan. Just like the rest of the administration, Todd Stern wants that in place. Okay. Now, he said that we may see a climate bill soon. Did any idea what soon means? It's whatever Harry Reid defined to John <laughs> Kerry as soon means. But uh, his last prediction that I heard in terms of putting it on a timeline is mid-March, so I'm sticking with that. Okay. Tyler Suters, thank you. You're welcome. And I'm Susan McGinnis with Clean Skies News.